I, I was attracted to the play because I have a mother. <laughs> uh, I think, and even more importantly, I think it, um, there's something about the story of, and the, I come from a generation of incredibly strong black women. I come from a generation also of uh, women who had to fight, one, to get out of the house, because my mother fought to get out of the house so that she could work, because she was convinced she was married to my father who was a doctor, and my father was from a generation that said, if you're a black man, you take care of your family. And if you take care of your family, you make sure that the women don't work, that they stay home. And my mother said, no, I am a college graduate. I'm a woman who has a mind. I have a, uh, I have a passion. I have a talent. I have a skill. And I have the right to go out and work because that, in fact, is also my destiny. So there was, that was the tension around our, our house. But I come from a generation of women. Uh, I have two sisters uh, uh, and a mother who also from very early on recognized that their voice, uh, not only was their, 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 it was important to, to raise their voice and speak into existence who it is and what they are, uh, but also to speak not only against uh, a culture that, that pushed back against that, that black women shouldn't work, or black women couldn't work, or there was no place in the professional, in the professional world for, for African American women, from a generation of men uh, who also said that you have no right to work, that you have no right to be, et cetera. And so watching that, look, looking at the play and watching these really kind of fully realized women affirm their right to be in the world became really attractive. Um, even more so, all of my mentors were, 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 were women. Uh, the reason why I'm in the theater is because of a female poet named Sonia Sanchez who looked and said, uh, if you're going to do this, you need to do this like with some sense of not only some passion and purpose, but also with a sense of walking with excellence. And so if you're going to, so my world has been shaped by that kind of, of tutelage. So whenever I hear the words, particularly like from Trey or watching uh, pieces like Trey and Lynn Nottage and Kia Corthran and, all, and Lydia Diamond and a whole generation of African American women who are writing today, I think some of the most exciting literature is coming out of the mouths of African American playwrights. Uh, or, Afri or African American players, or African playwrights from the diaspora. Uh, so that was the first thing that attracted Plus me. Plus, you have one. And then I have a daughter <laughs> who's also going to be a playwright. Oh wow! Um, oh, okay. Yeah, who okay. uh, just graduated from NYU in dramatic writing, <laughs> uh, and got her start actually here at Horizon at the Young Playwrights. Uh, that's where she found out and realized that she wanted to be a writer. Uh, she knew she wanted to be in theater. She thought she wanted to be a star. Uh, she thought she wanted to be an actor. And I told her she didn't have the guts to be an actor. And she didn't have the stamina to be an actor. And she didn't have the patience to be an actor. And she realized, you're right, I don't. But she realized that she loved theater because she'd always been around it. And so we put her in the, in the Young, Playwrights Af uh, Young Playwrights Boot Camp here at Horizon, which went like from 8 in the morning to about 11 at night. And at the, and at the end of the week, you produce a 10-minute play. And at the end of that, she said, I think I found my calling. So it was from there that she kind of moved on. So I have a special kind of also uh, love affair with Horizon Sight and they just hired me every summer. Um, they gave my, because of that, giving a young person a voice, she kind of found herself in the world. So aside from graduating at NYU, she also got a full ride to go to Yale. Ooh. And the best part of that is full ride. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, out of four hundred out of four hundred submissions, she was one of three that was selected every wow. So yeah, so so and that, that happened. So, so that's my affinity, my lineage and uh um and the sense of in fact I and my sense of being a writer, as I said, not only came from Sonia Sanchez, was simply the first time I ever presented a portfolio of my work to her, she looked at me and said, Well, brother, not everybody has to write. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but she said, so, and I read, she, but she, if you're going to write, then you have to take this seriously, and you have to do it in a way that you're committed to it, and you can't be cliche, 
and you can't, you know, uh, that you're, you're writing from a tradition of writers. You're writing from a tradition of Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston. You're writing from a tradition of Toni Morrison. You're writing from a tradition of Claude McKay and James Weldon Johnson. You're writing from a tradition of, of you know, Richard Wright and Ralph Ellison. You're writing from that tradition, which is those who organize a chaos of what this experience is of being black and in America, uh, or being black and in the world. And if you're going to write from that, then you have to, one, take it seriously, and two, you have to write from a profound sense of trying to tell the truth as compellingly as you can. And so the plays that I get attracted to, much like this one, is about plays that tell the truth, that begin to, to, to break against the grain of the, you know, the cliché and begin to talk about those things that matter, matters of the heart, those things that organize our life in a way. There is nothing more profound than the kind of homophobia that happens in the African-American community. It's just real, you know? It's just there. And houses have been broken up, families have been broken up, because we haven't been able to come to grips with some of this kind of psychic disarray that has happened as a result of going through slavery, as a result of going through an experience that says you are not only three-fifths of a man or woman, but you don't count in terms of the human experience. So that kind of organizing, that's what art and theater uh, can do in a certain way. It does. It heals. It heals in a very profound way. So that's what was passed on to me. Those are the plays that excite me. That's what I passed on to my daughter. If you're going to do this, you have to do this for real. My, my daughter recounts often when I sat with her in a Home Depot and said, you don't want to do this, and since you don't want to do that, you have no respect for the craft, and you have no respect for me in the craft, to hell with you, do something else, and walked out and got wood. <laughs> and she came back and she was in tears and you shouldn't have talked to me that way. And I said, I'm just trying to keep it real for you. So she went home and she read Eugene O'Neill. And she went home and she read August Wilson. And she went home and she read Sonia Sanchez. And she went home and she read Toni Morrison. And she said, oh, now I get it. And from that point on, I think she's kind of dedicated and rededicated herself to trying to be the best artist she can be. So that having said, that's what attracted me to this play. That's what attracted me to these amazing group of artists uh, that, we're, you know, that, that I am privileged to work with. Because it's not for money that we do this thing. You know, it would be nice, <laughs> given the cost of college, it would be nice. Uh, but it's more important that we do this because we want to be truth tellers, that we want to heal a community that we exist in, that we want to kind of bring together all the disparate elements of, of, who they, of who's in the world with us and trying to, you know, reach out hands and build bridges to each other as opposed to destroying each other's lives. And particularly in the age of Trump, I think theater is more important now than it ever has been. Um, when you live in a world where they will snatch babies from the breast of a mother, hear me? They will snatch babies from the breast of a mother. When you live in that world and people can sanction it, then theater and art is probably more valid and more valuable than ever. Because if we don't save each other, they've already told you they won't. So that's why we do art, not for the money. But again, to not simply say, how do we love each other, but to build bridges in loving each other in a way that will make us all sane and whole. So that's my spirit.